right, guys, you want to hear a pastor murder some names in the Bible? Stick around. We're going to finish out the story of Abraham and Isaac and the sacrifice that didn't happen. And you'll get to see me murder some names. Hey guys, and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk, and if this is your first time visiting with us, I just want to say welcome and thank you for being here with us today. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. And guys, if you appreciate this content, at some point make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn that bell notification to all so that you don't miss any future videos. We would love to have you as part of our family and absolutely share this video with someone if you'd like to as well. All right, guys, so we're going to get back into Genesis chapter 22. We're going to start in verse 15. We're going to work our way down through the rest of the chapter. And this is one of those sections where a lot of people just have a lot of fear when they're in church. Maybe somebody asks them to read and, you know, they... They, they're afraid to mess up a pronunciation or something like that. And, you know, guys, I could look back in the original Hebrew. I could just open an app on my phone and have it pronounce those names for me and sound like I can pronounce all of these names. But part of discipleship, part of education in the Christian world and discipleship is transparency. And guys, it doesn't matter whether you know how to pronounce names correctly or not. What does matter is whether the Bible, the Word of God, affects your life in growing toward Christ's likeness. So let's start in verse 15, and at the end you can laugh at me as I stumble over some names. Verse 15, then the angel of the Lord, and by the way, uh, catch the previous videos if you haven't already. I'm not going back into explaining any of the context right now because we're just continuing right after the uh, ram was sacrificed in Isaac's place. Verse 15, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord. So this is God making a, swearing a promise to Abraham. Because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, and again, that's a foreshadowing of Jesus, indeed, I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand of the and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. So I don't think that the, the descendants, as many as the stars of the heaven or the sand on the seashore, I don't think that really needs explanation. Because every time we think we've discovered all the stars we can see, somebody builds a better telescope. Right? If you can try and imagine naming all the sand, all, every grain of sand on the seashore, good luck. Right? His descendants are going to be numerous. But what's really neat here is that he goes on and says, And your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. Now remember, Abimelech made a covenant with Abraham. He saw the handwriting on the wall. He's like, I'm going to make friends before we make enemies. Good advice, by the way. Um, right here, when it says, Abraham's seed shall possess the gates of their enemies, right? Remember, in a fortified city, the gate was the entrance. It's the in and the out. Everybody had to go through those gates. So whoever possesses those gates, whoever is in control of those gates, controls the city. So when it says that your seed shall possess the gate of, your, of their enemies, it's saying you're not going to have any enemies. They are going to be so overwhelmed that your seed is going to be in control. Okay, verse 18, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Now, this is a loaded verse. This is, this is commonly in the New Testament era. This is commonly used as a missions verse as well. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. See, God brought about the possibility of salvation through the Jewish nation, looking forward to a Messiah. Now, modern day Jews do not believe that Jesus was that Messiah, so they continue studying and looking for the Messiah. The Jewish nation at the time that did believe became what we now know as Christians, as well as bringing in Gentiles, the ones that did believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So here's the thing. Either way, 
all the nations of the world are indeed blessed through Abraham because that is the only way of salvation is through this promise that God has made. Indeed, as, as the Jewish nation was supposed to live a witness, they were supposed to be missionaries in the land that they lived in, just like we are supposed to be missionaries in our land, our area, and all over the world, right? In him, all the nations, or in his seed, all the nations of the earth would be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. See, this is the beginnings of a deeper revelation of the gospel. Again, foreshadowing, I'm not taking the time today. This is just the beginnings, but prior to this, we have no concept of, of what salvation was to be. But this is now the beginnings of it in a more explicit way. Verse 19, so Abraham returned to his young men. Remember, he left the two guys by the donkeys, right? And they arose and went together to Beersheba. Remember Beersheba from the previous section. And Abraham lived at Beersheba. All right, now this next section, verses 20 through 24, this section is now setting up ultimately the provision for Isaac's wife because the Jewish nation was commanded to only marry other Jews. Now, not at this point. That command would come later in Scripture. But at this point, it was already beginning because now we have the setup for who Isaac would be able to marry. That's why we're getting this lineage here in these last few verses. This is also where you can laugh at me for my mispronunciation of some of these. And again, guys, I choose to do this because I, I need to be able to model transparency for you. And if I, on a daily basis, don't know how to pronounce these, I'm not going to look it up to pretend that I do. It's not about me looking intelligent. It's about us growing together. So again, I'm speaking just as if we were sitting across from the table from each other. All right, that didn't make sense, but you know what I mean. All right, verse 20. Now it came about after these things that it was told to Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah has borne a child to your brother Nahor. Uz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, very original names there. Um, I can't help but think of uh, Home Alone, you know, but anyway. Um, and Kemuel, his, the father of Aram. And Chesed, and Hazo, and Fildash, and Jidlaf and Bethuel. Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. Hey, that one I can say. These eight Milcah bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother. His concubine, whose name was Rumah, also bore Tabath, or Teba, and Ge Gehem, and Tehash, and Mekah. Who knows if I'm saying that right, right? But there we have Rebecca being mentioned, and she is going to be a significant figure later on in the story. So guys, if you appreciate this content or you just enjoyed watching me murder some names, hit that like button, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification to all. Help support the channel that way. If you want to further support us, share this video on social media or with someone that you think would appreciate it. And if you want to help financially, there is a link down in the description. Guys, thank you very much and God bless.